On this episode of Create Consume Repeat, I'm going to show you how I built this wireless follow focus unit and break down why I selected each piece. Roll the intro. For those unfamiliar with film, television, and commercial production, let me explain why this unit right here is so important. While on set, the responsibility of maintaining a camera lens's optical focus on subject belongs to the first AC. And in order to do this very important job, the first AC can use either an on-camera follow focus, like this wooden camera zip focus in my hand, or a wireless solution like the Tilta Nucleus M, Teradek Control 3, or RE Hi5, which arguably has the best name. Now. Each solution has its pros and cons, with the on-camera solution being the easiest to set up and use, as long as your camera movements stay relatively simple and straightforward. But if your production requires dynamic camera movements akin to any modern day action film, you will undoubtedly need a wireless follow focus and way to monitor that camera's feed, since the dance between camera operator and focus puller can get complicated and slow down your production. Now, at this point, there will inevitably be someone in the audience that will say, when I use autofocus, the autofocus on my Sony or Canon camera is amazing. <sighs> To those, I would say yes, those cameras have amazing autofocus, but they are unable to match the granular control needed on a professional production. And let's be honest, focus pulling, shit's an art form. Now, if you're interested or plan on building a unit similar to this one, you will need the following equipment. A Tilta Nucleus M wireless lens control system, which consists of a wireless motor and fizz unit. A Tilta Ari standard rosette adapter, a Tilta Nucleus M Fizz monitor bracket, a Teradek Bolt 4K LT wireless transmitter and receiver, a Teradek 2 pin Limo to P tap cable, which is in this pile right here, an Atmos Shinobi 7 inch 4K HDMI SDI monitor, an Atmos D tap to DC barrel coiled cable, again in this pile, two 4 inch small rig aluminum alloy 15 millimeter rods, small rig 15 millimeter rod caps, two small rig 90 degree 15 millimeter rod clamps, a small rig rod clamp with NATO rail, a small rig V-lock assembly kit, a small rig left side wooden grip with Ari rosette, a Bebop V98 micro V-mount battery, but any V-mount battery will do, a Cineparts D-tap splitter and holder, which was 3D printed, a 5.7 inch Camvate 15 millimeter cheese rod, a Camvate adjustable monitor mount, which is right here, a light stand head mount with one quarter inch 20 male threaded screw. Woo! That was a mouthful. Oh, and don't worry, I'll add the links in the description below. With all the parts laid out and accounted for, we can begin by attaching the rosette adapter to the fizz unit, followed by the monitor bracket right here. Okay, cool. So again, as mentioned, we are just gonna mount this piece right here to this piece. And so we can start. Whoa. Okay, here we go. Uh, so twisty, 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 make sure it's tightened, not too tight, obviously. You want to make sure it's tight enough that it'll hold, but you don't want to torque it because that'll cause a whole bunch of other problems. So nice and tight, not too crazy. And there we go. So now we can obviously put on this bracket right here. The way I would do this is I would connect it. It's an RE rosette. And so you have this little red piece here. And again, don't feel like you have to get it right exactly the first time because it's going to take a couple like a little bit of play. You have to kind of move it around to kind of figure out where it fits best with the wooden handle. Once those two pieces are firmly attached, we can move forward and attach the wooden handle right here. Using your thumb, you start to screw it in. So I already start to feel like this is the right kind of grip, right? So you kind of see my hands holding straight. You know, you might want to have a little bit of a tilt there make the adjustments you need so that it feels comfortable when you're carrying it around. Now, I know that the Tilta monitor bracket comes packaged with a 15 millimeter rod, but in my opinion, that rod is trash and should be substituted with the 15 millimeter cheese rod right here. Okay, 
So as you can tell, I'm gonna slide in this cheese rod right here and you kind of see these thumb screws right here. And so we're just gonna tighten it down a little bit, right? And again, it's a cheese rod. So you kind of want to get it on the meat on the ends right here. Uh, so not right here where the actual, you know, holes are, but right here on the meat. I like to say the word meat. <laughs> so these caps, I just like them just in case something goes wrong and it, let's say you unfasten that thumb screw and it just goes sliding off. We don't want that, do we? Now, before we attach one of the other caps, we want to attach one of these clamps on the other end, kind of slide it in since our rod will go through this kind of hole right here. So obviously get it into a nice spot for now. Again, you can adjust it later, but once you have it, you're good to go. So. Now that we have that connected, we obviously want to kind of slide on the monitor mount right here. So that looks about good for now. So we can just tighten this up right here. Okay, this is, this is good for now. All right, so now that that's on nice and tight, we can put the other cap on. And again, this is just an extra thing. If you're really trying to cut weight, you don't need to use these caps. I actually think the caps are just really nice because again, we don't want anything to slide off by accident. So next up, we're gonna take up one of these 15 millimeter rods, these small rig ones, and we're gonna thread it through right here like this. And we're just gonna tighten it quickly just to get it in position. And now we're gonna take one of these and we're gonna put it on as well. Okay, and so there we are, there you have it. And you're probably wondering, well, why is he doing this? Well, the reason why is we're gonna take another one of these rods right here, and we're gonna thread it through here. We'll tighten that up right there. You start to see that we've kind of created this system where I'm gonna hang things off this where the battery will go right here, and the monitor and the Terra Deck 4K will go right here. Because it's starting to get heavy, the best thing to do is to really attach this piece right here. So this will allow you to throw this onto a light stand. And there you have it. So now it's on the actual cheese rod, which is really cool because you can take this small little light stand right here next to me and I can just mount it. And now we're actually able to work on the device. Next, we attach this 15 millimeter rod NATO rail piece. So again, slide it on, right? Again, we're gonna find our spot and actually, I I think I'm gonna put it this way. It's really important. All right, there we go. And once that's connected, we can mount our V-mount clip. And so you see it right here. We're gonna attach it right here. And so I'm gonna need this again. So now that that's connected, obviously we can throw on the battery, but that would be silly because we still have to do some work on the back. So here is this really wonderful piece I found on Etsy. It's 3D printed. It holds this um, D-tap um, kind of outlet. I think this is the best because you're going to want to connect, obviously, the Terra Deck and the Atmos Shinobi. And so that'll give you two ports. And then you have two more ports for anything extra that you might want to add in the future. And hypothetically, if you wanted to even save some money, depending on the type of V-mount battery you have, you will have multiple ports. So obviously this one has, you know, this port up top, but I know that there are other, you know, V-mount batteries that have multiple D-taps. So you could do it that way as well. Now that that's all done, we can really start to attach all the important pieces. So I think the first piece to really attach is your Terra Deck. But before we can throw this on, I would say that we should use this piece right here. Now, why do I want to use this little piece right here? Well, I like things that actually lock in place and keep it from actually twisting. And as you can see, there's holes right there that will keep it from twisting. I think this is important. So with that, two screws, let's spin this bad boy around. So let's attach the Terra Deck now. And I would suggest when you're doing this, kind of keep your ports, as in the Limo port and the HDMI port and the SDI ports, closer to the actual monitor. And again, when you look at the back of the Shinobi here, you'll see that the HDMI port is on this side right here. So if I mount it like this and I mount the Shinobi like this, the HDMI port and the HDMI port on this device will be on the same side. Really important. So now we're going to attach the Atmos Shinobi. And there are gonna be a few people in the audience that will wonder why not use an Atmos Ninja 5, which is a lot smaller, bring down the weight. And yes, you could use an Atmos Ninja 5, it would work. Um, but the problem with that is that if you're gonna really start doing focus pulling, you want a screen that's a little bit bigger, at least in the seven inch range, so that way you're not so dependent on the focus peaking tools. And give it a good, nice tightening and there you go. Next up, 
Um, it's just really the cables at this point because you basically have all the pieces. These little things right here, I should show you. These are called sprigs. This is an essential piece of your kit because it will help with cable management. Super duper important. Let's just put in a V-mount battery right now. Okay, V-mount is attached. And now we are gonna run our D-tap, you know, cable here right into the top of this battery. And now we have power. So right here, you see that this cable is just dangling. But using a sprig, you can actually just kind of dip it into there into like one of those cheese plate holes. And now you essentially have really great wire management. So now that that's connected, let's just kind of put in our HDMI cable, as you can see. And so here we go. We can put it into the back of the Atmos. Next up, we have to power this bad boy. And so how do we do that? Well, we can slide in our power cable right there, and then we can just slide this underneath. And next up, our Limo connector. So again, Limo connector goes right here. And so we're good to go. All I need to do is put on our handle. Okay, I'll pop this off, turn this around, make sure I put the batteries in the right way. As you can see, plus minus, plus minus, slide it down. Okay, here we go. So now in order for this to work, I'm gonna have to turn on the Terra Deck on the actual camera. So I'm gonna turn it on right now. Terra Deck's on. Pull this off. So here we go. I'm gonna turn on my Terra Deck. You can see it's powering on. Turn on my Shinobi. See it's powering on. I'm gonna turn this on, turn on the Nucleus M. So let me get myself into focus again. Ah, I'm in focus and all done wirelessly. It's amazing. It's fucking great. Now, for those sharp eyed viewers wondering why I didn't tuck the battery behind the Terra Deck, I just prefer the battery off to the side since it places the center of gravity directly on the handle. But keep in mind, this is a modular design, so you can customize it any way you want. As mentioned earlier, each solution has its pros and cons, and this unit is no different. Unlike the on-camera solution that is turnkey, this unit will require you to sync the wireless motors and wireless video transmitter each time you turn it on, which isn't difficult, but does require a few more steps. Additionally, this unit is pretty hefty, weighing it at seven pounds, so you definitely won't be carrying this around set for extended periods of time, unless you're this guy. Now, for those of you that follow my channel looking for A10 Mini Pro tips and tricks, you might be curious if this will work with the A10 Mini Pro. And the answer is yes, but I wouldn't recommend it. Your best bet would be using fiber optic HDMI for short runs or SDI cables for really long runs. And with that, we are now at the end of another episode, and I hope you found it useful. Need more clarity on a given topic? Let me know all about it in the comment section below. And as usual, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and bell button. It helps build the channel, and more importantly, keeps you notified when I drop a new episode. Bye!